All right, welcome back everyone. So in today's tutorial, I want to show you how you can make some leather wraps that wrap around continuously around an object. So in my scene right now, I have an object that represents a handle of some sort. So this could be a sword handle, a gun handle, doesn't really matter. And I want to make um, a geometry that wraps around this. So let's go up to the Create tab, and I'm going to add an object into the scene, and it's going to be a helix. So that's under Polygon Primitives and Helix. And the reason why I'm choosing a helix is that it already has a spiral pattern, right, that we can use to make that wrap. So I'm going to open up the Attribute Editor, and over here, under the Polyhelix one, we can change some of these settings if we want. I'm going to keep it pretty simple, but I will increase the coils up to four. And then what I want to do is lower these subdivisions as well. So I'm going to make it 10. We can always smooth it out later to give it more geometry. So right now, um, I have what I need. I will increase the height a little bit as well, though. So maybe something like this. All right, so this is what I have so far. And what I want to do is um, use one of these edges that go around the object and convert it to a curve. So to do that, what I'm going to do is go into edge mode, holding down the right mouse button to go to edge mode, double clicking this edge. And then I'm going to go up to the modify tab. Down here, you have your conversion options. And over here, you have something called polygon edges to curve. Click on that. And there you go. We have a curve from that edge. So that edge loop, I should say. And so what I'm going to do now is just delete this mesh. And then we can use this curve and loft it with another curve. And to do that, let me just show you a quick demonstration. So I'm going to select this curve. I'm going to make a duplicate by pressing Control D. And I'm going to move that second curve down here. And I'm going to select both curves and then go to this curves and surfaces shelf, surfaces shelf, and click this loft icon over here. And there you go. You can see that um, we have this uh, new piece of mesh that looks like a wrap. So what we need to do is just wrap it around this object. And we can do it a couple of different ways. But before we go on, I just want to mention sometimes you will loft and you'll get the surface and it might be reversed. And to reverse that nerve surface, you would go up to surfaces and reverse direction. I'm just going to leave it the way it was, though. I'm fine with the way it looked for me. And then, um, so let's go over how we can wrap this. So what we can do is we can convert this, sorry, convert this lofted um, surface to geometry and then wrap the geom geometry around this, or we can wrap the curve around it. So there's advantages both ways, but I prefer to wrap the curve around it. And before you wrap the curve, you want to kind of make this look the way you want. So with this curve, let me just show you. Um, I can move it down and I can have a wrap that has a bit of spacing if I want. I'm quite fond of that kind of look. Or what we can do is a little more difficult. We can um, move it down a little bit further and have this overlap the other one. So I think that looks really nice as well. And then we can move the curve and scale it out so that it has that overlap effect. All right, so let's um, do the overlapping uh, method. So I'm just going to undo that. Um, also, something to note is I'm going to just delete this lofted surface for now. Um, if you want to change the look of your, your um, um, wrap, now would be a good time when there's only one curve. So if I were to delete the lofted surface as well as that second curve, it's much easier to change the look of this now by holding down the right mouse button, go to Control Vertex, and maybe you want um, to move a couple of these points and have it um, sit a little bit over the other curve, right? Or over the other part of the wrap. And maybe down here, same thing. But I'll keep it pretty simple and leave it the way it was. Just something I wanted to mention. All right, so I have this curve. And then what I'm going to do is um, make a duplicate. So Control D to duplicate it. Move it down here, just slightly past that other curve because I want it to overlap. And then I'm going to select the first curve, hold down Shift, select my object. And this object, by the way, um, has no history and has its transforms frozen. I find that works better. And then let's go and click this. Um, oh, sorry. Let's go to the Deform tab. And then we'll go to the Shrink Wrap option. And I have it set to close this. I find that works pretty well. But you may want to uh, just experiment with some of these other options if closest doesn't work for you. I'm going to turn on X-ray mode so we can see that wrap. And click Apply. 
And there you go, you can see that it's wrapped quite nicely around that. So let's do the same thing for the second one. I'm gonna select this, hold down shift, select my object, and click create, just to close that window. And there we go. Now this is wrapped around there. So if we select both curves now, we could loft it if we want, and then we have it uh, wrapping around this object. Now, something to note is that if you do it th this way, and then we try and scale out this curve to give it that overlapping effect, you run into a bit of an issue is that it doesn't quite um, scale out properly anymore. Just gonna undo that. So what I'm going to do is delete this lofted surface and instead, before I loft it, I'm gonna select both of these curves and delete its history. So we'll go to edit, delete by type history, and then I'll take the two curves and loft it, right? And if I just hide our object for now, Let's exit X-ray mode as well. I'm gonna press H on the keyboard to hide it. And then if I select that bottom curve, I can now scale it out and give that give it that overlapping effect we're going for. All right, so let's uh, first, let's give this a different color. I'm gonna select the object, hold down the right mouse button, choose assign new material, and I'm just gonna give it a blend, some leathery, leathery color. Uh, close enough. All right, just gonna close that up. So now um, let's go back to that second curve and I just wanna make sure these are scaled evenly. I'm gonna go with 0 0.05 for the scale value and 0 0.05. There you go. The reason I didn't scale it uniformly, just so you can see, is that if you scale it uniformly, it kind of pushes upwards. There you go. All right, so I'm gonna close that up. And then um, that looks pretty good for me. And now let's bring back our object. And there we go. And what we want to do is select the lofted surface and we want to convert this to geometry. So actually, let me hide the object again so it's a little bit easier to see. I'm going to select the lofted surface and then we go, want to go to the Modify tab, Convert, and we're looking for NURBS to Polygons. Open up that option box and I'm going to just reset this. And the conversion method I'm choosing is control points, which takes into account the um, points on the curve. And then I'll click tessellate. And there we go. Here's our low poly version. If I smoothed it out, we can see that it's going to look exactly like that NURB surface that we had. So I can press one to go back. And what we wanna do with this is we want to extrude it a little bit. So you can select the object, hold down shift and the right mouse button, and click extrude. Actually, before that, I do that, let's bring back our object so we can see it. And then we will extrude and we'll give it a bit of thickness. And I think that should be fine. I'm gonna press three on the keyboard to take a look. You can see that it rounds out. We just need some supporting edges. So I'm gonna select the object again. Maybe I'll just isolate it this time. And I'm gonna hold down, uh, sorry, I'm gonna hold down shift and the right mouse button to grab my multi-cut tool or you can grab it from the modeling toolkit. Just wanna add a few supporting edges, one at the top end and at the bottom, and maybe at the bottom edge and the top edge as well. And then wanna add one right here as well. All right, let's take a look. We'll bring back the handle by exiting isolation view, and then I'll press three on the keyboard just to take a look at it and see if I'm happy with it. So I think that looks pretty good right there. We could move that point out a little bit. And then uh, down here, we'll probably want to move this in a little bit as well. So um, let's take a look on this side. Looks pretty good. I could scale it or I can move that out. So what I'm gonna do is actually move it by the uh, curve points. So let's turn on X-ray mode. For this section here, I'm gonna select the top curve, hold down the right mouse button, choose Control Vertex. And I'll grab maybe these two over here and just move that out a little bit. There we go. And this one, I'll grab that top curve again. Uh, curve points. Don't think I had selected it. Let's try that again. Curve points. There we go. I think I did. I, maybe I just couldn't see it. And I'll move this one in a little bit. And I'll do the same for the bottom here.
put this in just so that it's sitting a little bit more snug to here. So, and there we go. We have a wrap now that is wrapping around uh, continuously. And you can take this, um, you know, into a sculpting program and give it some details if you want. This is just a preview. So if we want to smooth it out, we could just go back to pressing one on the keyboard to go back and then uh, hold down shift and the right mouse button. And we can smooth it up a couple levels if we want, right? Just give it the amount of geometry you want that fits your project. But for something like this, I would probably sculpt it and give it a bit more detail. But there you go. Now you can uh, make some wraps for your weapon handles or whatever you like. So that's it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one.